Please welcome to this, the 74th governor of the great state of North Carolina, ladies and gentlemen, Pat McCrory. Thank you very much. Thank you all very much. Happy 75th birthday, Ragsdale High School, class of 74, proud of it. In fact, uh, yesterday I got a call from my English drama teacher from 1974, Ruth Revels, who is now chairman of the Indian Affairs Council at the age of 70, uh, 81. And she called me up yesterday on my cell phone and I said, hello, and she said, Patrick, this is Ruth Revels. I'm mad at you right now. And I said, Miss Revels, what's the problem? She said, you're supposed to come to the Indian Affairs Council meeting on Saturday here in Raleigh. And I said, Miss Revels, I would love to go. We've done a video for it, but I've got to be in Marion. And then I've got to go to Johnson County for a Civil War reenactment. Then I'm visiting a business. She said, Patrick, I expect you to be at the Indian Affairs Committee meeting. I've never been pushy before, and I said, you've been pushy for a long time, Ms. Revels. I will be there. That is the impact that a teacher's had on my life, Ruth Revels in 1974. In fact, she is having an impact on my life today at the age of 81, being the head of the Indian Affairs Council for the state of North Carolina. She had an impact on me so much in 1974, my senior year in high school, that when I went to college, I got my teaching degree. And my senior year in, high, in college, at Catawba College, I student taught at North Spencer High School, North Rowan High School in North Spencer. And I told this story at my State of the State speech, but it'll stay with me for life because on my first day of teaching and student teaching, I had prepared and prepared and prepared for a 50-minute lecture in civics to seniors in high school. I was all of 20 years old. The students were 17 years old. I thought I had 50 minutes of material, and I was ready to knock their socks off. So I started the lecture, and within seven to 10 minutes, I was completely out of material. And the students were sitting there with just staring at me, and Wayne Crowder, my teacher advisor at the time, was sitting there taking notes, and I went, this is the end of my teaching career. And the next 45 minutes were the longest 45 minutes of my life. But it taught me something. First of all, it taught me that teaching is tough, and teaching is a profession, and teaching is a skill. And Wayne Crowder, who I just saw about three weeks ago at an event, my student advisor teacher at the time, who's now retired, came up to me and said, you would have made a great teacher. And that was one of the best compliments I've ever had. Because teaching and being an educator and being a principal and being a superintendent and administrator is a great profession and a great career. And I first want to thank you for your obligation to making this state a better state for your profession. Now. We've got a lot of work to do, and I recognize that, and we're listening to you. And the first thing that we have to do is, yes, we have to make sure we have thorough and strong investment in our public school systems. This year, for example, in the budget that I introduced just about four weeks ago, we increased over a billion dollars into teacher salaries. A billion dollars. That includes fulfilling the promise to make sure every entry-level teacher coming to our North Carolina school system, whether they're the east, the west, or the Piedmont, or in a rural or urban area of this state, will at a minimum make $35,000 a year. In addition, in the budget, veteran teachers with 19 years of experience will get a 10% increase in their salary. But it's not just about investing in salaries. We also have to invest in students and equipment and supplies. So in our budget this year, I, I put in the budget a $70 million increase in instructional materials. I'm not telling you how to spend that instructional, instructional material. You can choose between tablets and textbooks. That's not my choice. That should be your choice. You know how to best spend that money, and we think we should give you the most flexibility possible on how to spend that money best to meet your students' need. Third. We want to work on testing. I've gotten feedback from the principals, the superintendents, and the teachers, and students and parents. And the fact of the matter is, we need to revise and better streamline 
testing. We need fewer tests and better tests. And we need more competency-based testing that really make a difference, that measure students and also give us the time to correct any deficiencies that students might have. This is feedback that we've gotten from you. And by the end of this year, my commitment to you, working with June Atkinson, who's been a great partner, I might add, we've worked extremely well together, is to have a revision of how we do testing in our North Carolina schools. The fourth thing I want to briefly talk about is teacher certification. Eric Gucan, who is my teacher advisor, my education advisor for all levels of education, K through 12, community colleges, and the university system. Eric, if you would please stand up. Y'all give Eric Gucan a round of applause. He is a former teacher. He taught, he taught in New York City in some of the poorest neighborhoods. He was Teach for America. He's got his master's degree from Harvard, but when he moved to North Carolina, it took him 18 months to get his North Carolina teaching certification. Ladies and gentlemen, if we're talking about competency-based testing for our students, we also got to streamline the way we get teachers into North Carolina. If we have a shortage of teachers, why would an Eric Gucan have to take 18 months to be able to teach in North Carolina with a master's degree in Harvard, Teach for America, and incredible experience in New York City. We've got to look for not only former teachers or teachers from other states to make it easier for them to come to North Carolina and cut through the bureaucratic red tape, but we also need to look for ways that we can recruit people from industry who maybe want to change in career and come into teaching. And if they have the competency already to become a teacher, let's don't make them jump through the hoops that are unnecessary to fill their potential and to meet the needs of North Carolina. So we're working on legislation to do just that. And last but not least is master's pay for teachers. Now one area of master's pay that I did put in on our budget, which I think is extremely important, is master's pay for STEM and exceptional children teachers. This is the high priority that we must have in the teaching profession. The market demands it, and we need to reward not only them, but we need to reward teacher leaderships. And this is why, with Eric's input and inputs from teachers throughout North Carolina, we have set up a career testing, a career pathway to success for teachers. We should reward teachers and administrators who accomplish the best of the best. We need to reward leadership because when I talk to teachers, when I talk to talk to students, when I talk to superintendents, the one thing they say that makes a difference in the school is the leader in the schools. And we need to reward the strong leaders because without strong leadership in each school, we will not have successful schools. So we need to make sure that leadership is rewarded and compensated. Now, I'll tell you, I've been visiting schools throughout my first two years as governor. In fact, just two weeks ago, I was back in my hometown of Charlotte and visited Dilworth Elementary School. And no longer is the school system or the teaching of schools just done by what I was taught to do in 1978 at North Rowan High School, and that was lecture of the students. Now, teaching and, and administration is a matter of collaboration to get the best results. Collaborations among the superintendents, the principals, the teachers, the teacher aides, which are still very, very important, the teacher assistants, and also the students and the teachers and the parents. This is a collaboration effort. And to see all the different methods of teaching now that is existing throughout North Carolina shows the progress that we're making. And we're seeing it in the results today. We need your ideas. I trust you with your ideas. I ask you to keep giving us solutions, the way we can better perform better and support what you need. The solutions are not inside the belt line here in Raleigh. The solutions are closest to where we're touching the students and hearing from the students and hearing from the teachers and hearing from the superintendents and principals and teachers. The solutions are out there closest to our customer. And we want to listen to more of your solutions while you're at this conference. So as we celebrate the past, let's all work together to figure out how we're going to move for the future and stay competitive in this ever-changing environment. Thank you and God bless you for your public service and your commitment to public education. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.